all right youtube what is going on hope you guys are doing well ah uh, yes i want to get into this video and give my little two cents about this situation so we're going to be talking about the steam deck now funny enough because i got a stream deck for el gato so i have that but hey it is what it is so I want to give you my perspective as this game, this console or device from a gamer's from a Nintendo fan's perspective. Now, I'm not gonna be like the typical person. I'm gonna call it as straight down as I as I can. Again, I am biased. I'm not gonna deny it. That would be stupid of me to not say that. But I see some stuff here that was some conversation and a conversation piece right here. So let me just go. Let's listen to the little pitch from, 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 from Val about this. And we go, and we, uh, and we go with that for now. And I'll get into my thoughts. Is the Steam Deck. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about it. Let's get right into it. All right, we're really excited to finally get a chance to talk about Steam Deck. And in this video, I'll quickly get you up to speed on what you, as a developer, should know right now about Steam Deck. Hmm, okay. And this is Steam Deck. It's a handheld, high-powered gaming device that lets you take your Steam library with you wherever you are. It's got a beautiful 7-inch mm -hmm. display, ergonomic controls that are really built for long play sessions, and a new look for Steam designed for Steam Deck. You can think about Steam Deck like a portable gaming PC with built-in controllers. Mm -hmm. With Steam Deck, you can take your Steam library with you and your games are already on deck. And you can start playing on one device like a home gaming PC and then pick up the Steam Deck and resume where you left off or back the other direction. Okay. This is enhancing the value of your game in a user's library and it's expanding your audience. Steam Deck represents a new way for Steam users to play your games and explore your world. And um, before, and just to let people know, but I'm not against this. Now, I'm not thinking like other people say, oh, this is the Switch killer, or this is competition for the Switch. No, it's a whole different market that is well needed. I'm not against it. I'm not doubting it at all. I, I, I do find a couple flaws in it. I'll wait a little later on to talk about it. But now I'm, I'm not against this. I am totally honest to see to have this. When I pick up this, like I put, like the stream ODL, when I pick up the, the Steam Deck, there's a reason why I will pick it up, but not now. And right now it's like it's backlog until Q um, like Q4 of 2022. I was gonna pick it up anyway at that point. Well, uh, maybe later down. But once I see that it has it, because it does have the library, which is very important to me. But just want to let you know, I am not against this. I'm just saying that. And Steam Deck is not a walled garden. You can install whatever you want on it, including other apps and OSs. It's also really just a PC. You can use USB and Bluetooth peripherals or dock it to a monitor and connect a keyboard and mouse and use it just like a regular PC. Ultimately, it's an evolution of years of hardware and software design work. We've taken everything we've learned from developing the Steam Controller, Steam Machine, Steam Link, and Valve Index, along with the Steam Client, and a- Yeah, Link and Steam Machine didn't work out that well, did it, Valve, but all right. That's my little dig in there. Applied all of that collective experience in designing Steam Deck. Steam Deck runs games using Proton. And if you aren't familiar with Proton, it was originally released back in 2018, and it's a compatibility layer that allows Windows games to run on Linux. The team has been working on and improving Proton for a while now. Most APIs are already supported by Proton and most games already just work. And the team is building support for more APIs and enabling more games by default. Mm -hmm. Our goal is for every game to work by the time we ship Steam Deck. We are constantly building on Proton and there's a lot of work that has been done that doesn't yet affect the public version of Proton, including testing of thousands of games, engaging with third parties like anti-cheat providers, work targeting game compatibility, and more. We've also created a new Steam experience just for Steam Deck. For input-output, Steam Deck has a 7-inch 1280x800 touchscreen, has Wi-Fi connectivity, Bluetooth peripheral ready, and it's dockable for use with an external display and USB peripherals. 
Here's a quick glance at what's inside a Steam Deck. It is a custom AMD APU, along with 16 gigabytes of RAM. And while there are three SKUs representing three levels of storage for the system, as a developer, there's really just one SKU to target. It is 16 gigabytes of RAM across the board, and it uses the same processor. And of course, Steam Deck includes all of the common gamepad controls that you'd expect, but along with that are trackpads and a touchscreen, and all of that works together to enable you to play a wide variety of Steam games. And as I mentioned, we've designed this device for very long play sessions. Everything about it is designed for comfort and familiarity. Of course, it has the standard A, B, X, Y buttons, the D-pad, dual analog thumbsticks, as well as those dual trackpads and gyro controls. And on the back side of the deck, you can see a USB-C charging port, an audio jack, as well as an L1, L2, and R1, R2 buttons, and two auxiliary buttons on each side on the back of the device. All right, jumping into a few frequently asked questions about Steam Deck. First one up is, what OS is Steam Deck running? Well, it's running SteamOS 3.0, which is a new ver- I'm letting this play now because I don't have stuff to say. Because a lot of the stuff, like including the FAQ and whatever, so people go out of it, understand it in my video before I criticize it and say what I gotta say. And they might be negative towards it. But I just wanna make sure that people understand what the deck is from them because I saw the thing from IGN and it was a it was a IGN was 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 a bunch of mess. Second generation AMD whatever. no 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 it's the second generation um, RDN which is the graphics part. AMD right now is in the five thousand and the APU might be looking look like it might be a 5,000 as well to its custom. It might be in the 5,000 in the fourth generation. So, it, and then there's stuff with the, with the, with the memory and all. It, just, it was just a mess reading through that article. Of like, this is why I don't like, this is why I don't listen to IGN. I can't believe they got more crappy than they were before, but I'm not surprised because again, remember, they gave a review of um, Cyberpunk 27. And they use the game developers footage than their footage, which is crazy how they let that go. But again, let's, I just want to let this go a little bit more and then we'll talk, we'll go to the website and talk about more stuff. Version of SteamOS based on Arch Linux. Another question you may have is, well, my game doesn't have a Linux version. So do I need to port my game to Linux to have it work on Steam Deck? And the answer is no, it's, you actually don't need to do that. Your Windows build will likely work right out of the box and that's all thanks to Proton. Next is, are there any tips for making sure my game will be a great experience on Steam Deck? And a quick test to see how your game might work on Steam Deck is to plug in a controller and play your game from startup, paying attention to any launchers or interfaces where you might need to reach for your mouse or keyboard. We also recommend that you look into supporting Steam input, especially if you have a mouse and keyboard centric game. Steam Input not only allows for additional customization, but can also make your mouse and keyboard centric game a better experience for deck players, even without refactoring the whole game around controller input. Here's a link to more information about Steam Input. You could try installing Linux and Steam on a machine to create a Linux testing environment so that you can test how your game runs on Proton, and you can find a link to how to do that here. Finally, support Steam Cloud. This is the feature that will allow your players to start a game on PC and then seamlessly continue that session on Steam Deck. Here's a link to more information about Steam Cloud. All right, I mentioned this a little bit before, but you might be wondering a little bit more about docking your Steam Deck. The answer, of course, is yes, you can dock your Steam Deck using the USB-C port, and you can expand that with a hub or a dock into HDMI and USB while still retaining that power charging pass-through, which enables you to be able to charge your deck. Another question you may have is, well, my game uses anti-cheat, which I know doesn't work with Proton, so how am I gonna get around this for Steam Deck? The answer is we are actively working with BattleEye and Easy Anti-Cheat to get support for Proton ahead of launch. Are people gonna be able to install Windows on Steam Deck or other third-party content? And the answer to that is a big yes. It is a PC. You can install whatever you want on it. 
Okay, at this point, you're probably wondering, how am I gonna get a hold of a dev kit? And the answer is we're currently building dev kits and have earmarked some of those units for partners like you to test your games. And these dev kits will be identical to the same Steam decks that we'll be shipping off to customers that they'll be playing later this year, except for a few small cosmetic differences. And supplies are really limited. And so we're going to have a program where you're going to be able to request a dev kit soon. And we'll be sure to keep you posted and let you know the moment you can submit a request. All right, that's just the top line information that you need to know as a developer coming out of this announcement of Steam Deck. And of course, you'll be hearing so much more from us in the coming months as we approach launch. And we'll make sure to keep you up to date on all the information you need to prepare. If you still have questions, here is... All right, I just wanted that to go, you know, I'll just see on the screen right here. So... Like I stated before, like I stated before, the Steam Deck, I have nothing against it. It is something that I think is needed, but not as what I told that people think of it as, oh, it's the game changer. It's the switch killer. It's not, no. The people who this thing will be more usable for, in my opinion, is people who, who are not super graphics whores. Really. Person who wants, you know, you know, 4K and 1080 and 4K and 120 um, frames per second. This is not the console. This is not console for you. How you gonna feel pretty weird playing the game? Oh. For me, as like I said, I see the potential of what this thing is gonna be at. It's gonna run powerful. This is gonna be a problem, but like I said, I, I'll, I'll give my criticisms about that. Comfortable, long PlayStation, no compromise. We'll see. That I can't send them the that until it comes out. And I always at least, like I said, like I let the guy talk before, so you know about with this proton and how it works and what's going on from the developer side. Now you will have to turn on, sign in, pay your system. I don't like the whole signing per se, but I get it. It's a Steam thing. And because it's a PC, you have to do that. So understandable with that. No compromise. Where have I heard that before? Hmm. I've heard that before a lot of time. But we're gonna see how that works out in, in the situation. Now, Let's look at this little baby puppy here. And let's see how good they're gonna use the Steam Pad because they use it with the Steam Controller. I get it. So I never play with Steam Controller, so I can't say that I'm just gonna have what people do. I play with X when I play on PC, I play with Xbox X controller, you know, the Xbox controller. Now, there's something that stands out to me that I do like. I like they have two the analog sticks are right up top. Do that remind you of anything? The good old Nintendo Wii U controller. That's what this reminded me of. And I had no problem with the Nintendo controller Wii U gamepad. And it's, it's not it's not heavy. It wasn't, and like I said, we're gonna see how heavy this really is. It's a little form fitting more towards the Switch. But to pack all that stuff in, you gotta have a little, you gotta have a little weight to it. But again, I have not, nothing against that. I like it because to me, I feel way more easier with the two pads up there, the symmetry to move more easier than, than that. But again, your power will be, of course, you can use the pad down here to do the offset of how the game Max X control is. Now, I have to be honest with you, D-pad. Not even the Xbox controller, the D-pad feels right to me. Like Nintendo, I don't know what Nintendo does. Yes, they still need to fix a lot of problems with their Joy-Con drifting and everything. 
but their D pads always feel solid to me. Might be my bias, but I've played PlayStation. Uh, their D pad feels way more nice for me. I like it. And I'm surprised. I think I don't have my Vita up here, but and like this, I, I don't think I've played with a D-pad that was bad. I really don't know if I can play any Nintendo console with a D-pad was a problem. I, I can't remember. Analog, of course, with the Switch having to drift, yes. But that part, no. So, the spacing of the XYB button is something that I myself might have a problem with. But again, I don't have my hands on, the, on it. Because remember, like the Switch Pro Controller, I don't like how this the XYB is too close to the second thumbstick. So I play with the Wii U gamepad. I mean, the Wii U uh, con um, Pro Controller because of that situation. Because I, ju I just don't like it. Feels more better separated more. So that might be a problem for me. So I'm just saying me, not anybody else out there. That's just me. Now, let's get into down here a little bit of what's coming with it. 399 for 64 gigabytes of um, storage. That plus the um, carrying council. Then you have, then it jumps up to $529, which is a weird number. It could have just made 555, eh, whatever. 529, 256 NVMe SS sterile, fast storage carrying case, exclusive stuff. Then 649. 512 gig in the internal storage, um, faster storage, blah, 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 blah. Here's the thing. Go to Steve Nexus, Steve of Gamers Nexus. Can he explain this out way better? And I know he's going to open it up like he did with the switch and all the other consoles, which that's what he does. And I, I like his breakdown of certain things, the true breakdown of it. If you cannot access the inside, and that NVMe, the NVMe um, cannot be replaceable. Mostly, Steve is gonna sod it to it. But if it's if it's not sod, and you could switch in and put in a terabyte, and or put in two terabytes, then this that would up this game. That would up th this way better. And if they put it on the 649 one, yeah, that make that that make kind of sense. They would do that. Then then it makes it's worth the value in that. If you could do a swappable um, um, NVMe. But if you can, to me, this renders these cons, this cons, new renders these console, these skews. To me, a joke. And what I mean by that, I'm not playing the latest games on this on this thing when I uh, if I buy it, I'm not. What? Resident Evil, crazy gigs. Call of Duty 100, 108, uh, what was it? Final Fantasy 107. I can't, I can't put it on these things right here. And I know when people say, well, oh, well, Liger. No, really, you could use a SS, uh, you could use a, a, a Sims card. A Sims card. Okay. So hopefully, you get I'm um, not your Sims card, S, uh, uh, micro SD. Sorry, it's not something. It's because I was listening to Andre's video this morning, and he says about Sims, and it threw me off. But um, SSD card. Okay, yeah, I have me a 56. I have a 256 uh, gigabyte SSD card on my Switch. There's a problem with it though. Majority of the and majority of the games I have just have just the savers the saving part that's it it's not the whole game that's a big difference these games are not getting smaller they're getting bigger now if this thing i'll say this is a positive if this console there comes out force game developers to retract and go back to do kind of like a nintendo situation and not put all the make these big ass games and have the stuff then that's a plus in my book that's a thumbs up and i'm cool with that but I'm just saying, you buying them big ass games on this thing, that's a no go for me. Now, there's a way to play this game that I like. If I will buy this game, buy this console, it's a positive. This is where it, it has a sweet spot to buy Steam games when they're on cheap prices 
third party games like a Trials of Old Steel or Street of Range, or whatever, you pick it up on sale and they are small games. You could put it on here and then with the SSD, um, the, the, not SSD, with the SD mini card, that makes more sense to me and that's mostly what I'm gonna buy it for. I'm gonna buy it for more as a, a retro console thing, not as for the latest and greatest because these games are getting ridiculous. Cyberpunk 27 with all the patches and everything. Are you out of your mind? All those big games with all the patches? Nah, give me the small games. Give me the bite-sized games that I could play. You know, maybe play a little Sonic Adventure on the go. Maybe some, um, 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 what am I going to say? Uh, trial, not trial. Tales, Tales Arise. That's going to be there. Stuff like that. Yeah. But, the, but these crazy big ass games, no, I would not be buying this console for that. I'm buying it for the old stuff. So it will be good if again, it'll be super great if you could swap out the MVME. If you can't, then the SD card is gonna be its own way to do it. And it's, I, I, don't, I don't see it that way. Then you can see how some of this stuff is here. So let's go into the hardware. Like I say most of it is more than after the, the 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 thing, which is which I'm not surprised. Then you have a, you have a incompressive touch screen, of course. That's all good. Thumb uh, tracking pad makes sense because it'd be like a PC. The gyros, I can't say nothing. Got to see how the gyros affect compared to how Nintendo's gyro is. So, but I, I'll go with a positive rise for now. The extra buttons, as you can see right now. Yeah, it depends on what they could use for. Analog triggers to prove full range input to the best experience in driving games. Okay, that's if the guy just pushes it. But yeah. Best in class thumbstick with capacitive touch built in sensor to provide a letter precision and not found in any other portable devices. That's an attack on the switch. Let's see what happens. You can see all you can see all this when you want. But when it comes out, because remember Stadia said the same damn thing with their controller and they have problems. PlayStation 5 said the same thing and they have problems. Xbox Series and they have problems. So let's not pretend this. I, that one, I'll wait until the game come out and let's see what happens and then give time to it. Get the built-in storage of what I got just said right there. If it's um, built-in, if you're looking for more space and um, built-in storage with a micro SD card to fill up even more and more games. See that that might actually card be better for small games or small games that don't need a big updates and all that stuff. The AAA games, oh man, you know how much SD cards you can keep on buying, 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 and buying. Ridiculous. Hi Wi-Fi, which is good, but which is basically come with the switch OLED. 40 watt battery. Supposed to give um I like what I said. Which is here you go. This is what I'm saying. Onboard 40 watt battery provides several of playtime most of games. For lighter uses like game streaming or smaller 2D games, web browser, whatever, it gives you four, seven to eight hours. That's most of what most people can buy this to use for. I'm not really buying it for the AAA games because the AAA games can burn that thing like crazy, including if you put the multi specs onto it. So, like I said, they have it. You the stream that works in there. You put an SD card and it pulls in. I ain't got a problem with that. That's pretty cool. I think it's a plus. It comes with a dock, so you could do stuff like this to use your PC. Mostly, I would say for the TV, not PC. I would not use it as a double PC. I have a big ass PC beside me right now that works just as would be better than that. So that that defeats the purpose in my regard. And I won't be doing this nonsense right here. But the one with a TV, I get that. I work that. I could put on the same thing when I have the switch on. I'm cool with that. So we got that. What else we have? Let's see, software. Like I said, most of the software is gonna be that. Remote play makes sense. The store makes sense. This right here, I'm not a fan of it. And then you know that from my Nintendo. I'm not a fan of Nintendo's doing it either. Not a fan of the whole cloud save. I don't like people having my having my save in in, in situation. I don't like it. You guys can have it. I don't want it. I, I don't trust. Trust me. I call, I call Nintendo on this too. 
so i don't want i don't like it i like to have the save on my sd card so i i go back it up i have it myself i don't want nobody else in the cloud having it because again how certain things are with, with internet it's just annoying and i have very fast internet i have me a, you know well i think last last time i checked was 99 down and megabytes down and and 950 up on at&t fiber so that's what i got Like I said, it's mostly like, you know, your Combat A7, your Guilty Gear, like I will play, you, my portals, you know, stuff like that. I'll be playing Street of Range, a lot of old, old school, solid generations, like old stuff. That's what I'll be playing it for. Or like, as you can see right here with, um, with, um, Nuni Kuni. They get us all games like that and the prices for those, these games are gonna have a steam sale and gonna be good that's the part i have no problem with that like that makes sense to have we already talked about the new operating system you guys saw that so i'm not gonna go into that anymore so i exit it depends on what these are let's, let's, let's say how they feel and then we got but i could learn myself into that I'll give it that it has uh, LDDD5 on board. That's good for the speed for the RAM. Not that that's 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 game leading, and I'm not denying that. Six access control. We'll see how that works out. I mean, light sensor. Yep, that's good. I think this is the dock situation here. Ethernet. Which is good to have the ether for that. I'm cool with that. But again, we got Hades. Like this is where this will come in because you will get Hades for a lower price. Now these are people who like PC and stuff. Like see, the reason I like my Switch is this is not a Switch killer for me. One, it doesn't have the exclusive exclusive. They might develop it later on, which is what the Valve wants, and that makes more sense. That'd be cool. But it doesn't have the Mario. They don't have the the, the, the L, ISLP. And even um, Steve said the same thing too. It's a big difference in that. He's correct about that. But the games is just that situation. The older, the smaller indie games and stuff that will be on Switch and also be on this. I have no problem with and that's most we'll be playing this for in that regard they, they might have they might get the point to have exclusive games to the switch from okay, that's depending on how valve how far valves take it but it's not a bad idea in that regard but the false like i said i've seen in this game is just it is going to be its mem its hard drive that's going to be a problem if you're gonna play AAA games, high-end AAA games, it's gonna kill the battery. People, you can say all you want. There's a reason why they specifically they said, is, but this is the reason why they specifically said, um, where is it? Was it here? Oh, where? That's not bad. Why less? It's specifically why they said it's small. If you do these things, that's what to make the game last longer. Can I know? There's going to be people who are going to try to tweak this thing and make it more powerful and all this nonsense, just for whatever. Again, I'm not against this doing that. And I don't get it again when I get a dock. The dock's going to be a booster, like how we, we talked about how the Switch should be. But I am not against that. So. But if you, and you know, most people are going to take this and make it into emulators and all this nonsense to put their games on it. And they could do that. And like I said, it's a PC. So they're going to do what they're going to do for that. So I let it be what it is in that regard. But the only way I will buy this thing, again, I will buy it, but I'll wait. I'm not, I'm not in a rush. I got enough stuff to worry. Is the price. If, if it's like I said, if they put it that this part right here, um, if this, if the NVMe, if the NVMe and these two could swap out, if they could, if I could swap them out, then 
I'll mostly go with it with this one if I could swap it out. If they put it on this one, okay, then I might even go with this one. But this, I know they're not doing. They're not doing this. They're not doing it on that. So no, I won't buy. I won't buy that one. In that regard. So I'm not against this. This is not an and an online Nintendo like oh this is a competitor to the no it's not. It's not it's not. You at the end of the video you literally said you forgot out what it was. It's not a competitor. So let's not pretend this let's not pretend it man. It has oh it, it, it has an on top market and I could see Nintendo fans buying this again because if you go buy look if you're looking to buy digital games for certain for cheap prices this is a good console for you if you want a physical like me now no i want the physical game so i not could play without a no problem so people you know people are like, oh you know, 32 gig they're like 32 gigabytes of um the 10 you know, the storage like if you go on my switch i have not used up all 32 gigabytes on my internal switch at all i use the sd card i have a 256 sd card and yeah that's why I use it. Most of it is game saves. Majority of it is game saves. The cloud, and, and you know, the cloud doing what it's supposed to do, which is like, ah, uh, again, I hate the cloud, but I'm the Nintendo Switch as well too. But I am not poo-pooing this. It's, but it's not a Switch killer by no stretch of imagination. Again, it's right now it's selling like crazy. I'm nowhere close to buying this, but I could see this down the path two, three years from now. I could do it. Maybe they might have a second version of this if it sells well, that it will make it a, a swappable. And I'll be, that'll even be better. As it, the S, the uh, micro SD by itself is not helping the case in that regard. But, and I don't even know how it would work when you have, when you have these big AAA games and then you gotta have the, have the, um, the installs and the, and the, um, the updates and stuff like that. How does it work? Cause it's not gonna fit on the, the hard drive. The main drive so i i don't know maybe they're not to figure it out i do not know i know pc is already set up to to algorithm all the way it's supposed to be but again i don't know how it works i'll wait to see what he's coming out with that so with this game like i said i'm not against it i'm not poo-pooing it I'm not saying that the, the steam that can do good things it, it is is a part of the ecosystem to help gamers go down again in the positive part i could say about this if this could help triple a game designers to rein in their stupid handling and everything on that to this, that would be great. I doubt it, but that would be great. So, hey, I welcome the new system. Bring it on. And again, maybe three years from now, I'll pick it up and buy the old, old games and have them. If I, the old digital games, if I have them, if I, if I feel like it. And hopefully, you know, steaming will be crappy OS, uh, a crappy place where they put, they get, um, seriously, and I'm talking about this before, they've done it before, but getting your politics and stuff into it, and then, like, they, they lock you out of the games that you bought, which is pain in the ass. If you do that, you, you, then that's, that's a hell no for me. But, we'll see how that works out, okay? That, you know, I don't like that, that, that you have a cloud system that you can be locked out of any time you want, and you can't, you don't rightfully own your software, that's why I love, that's why I got a biggest library for my Switch right now. In, how, in that regard. But, that's how it's set up for me. And, it's the price. The, oh yeah, they did say they're selling this thing at a loss. So, it's, so people's like, oh, this, that's why the Switch is overpriced. You know? And to end Nintendo Life again. Then, the Nintendo Switch is not selling this thing at, at a loss. They're not selling their games at the console at a loss. They did it with the Wii U. They did not do it with the Switch. They ain't, they, they, they're like, okay, we know we got a hit on our hands, so we making it right. So, yeah. Hopefully this fills in the spot and not to be like how a freaking, um, what do you call it? I was gonna say, not gonna be like um, Stadia or Luna, like Amazon Luna. Oh, this is gonna be the new future, blah, blah, blah. Nah, I could see this being this. It's crazy, and I know the the the, the, the review the, the um reservation is all. I ain't gonna buy it. Order Q twenty two, Q twenty two, Q. Wow, that's just yeah. Uh uh. Nope. 
I'm not, I'm, I don't know how the system works with putting the money down in that regard, but yeah, we'll see. But like I said, I'm not against it. So, hey, something good. With that said, guys, and you can go through the stuff if you want to see what it is. But with that said, of course, I'm welcome it. That's my thoughts on Val's Steam Deck. Stream Deck, sorry. Stream Deck. Excuse me. And I welcome it. That's all I could tell you. So let, yeah, let's see what it is. That's my thoughts. You guys put their thoughts in and in, in see what it is down there. And again, as a Nintendo fan, I will. It's not. It's not a competitor. It's not them because they're it's into two different types of markets. Two different types of markets. All right. So remember, there's no perfect games out there. What's perfect to you is not perfect to me. What's perfect to me is not perfect to you. Simply enjoy your games on all consoles, including PC. And the steam and the, and the steam deck. Peace out. Have a good night.